interviews with business owners and veteran executives who share their wisdom and expertise to help you de-stress, free up time, and make more money. Profits of IT. Welcome back to the Profits of IT. I am Jim Punzenberger, your host and the creator of the Managed Prospecting System. If you're looking to generate uh, new partners or new clients, be sure to check out managedprospectingsystem.com. Excited to have the, the uh, JB Fowler with me today. He is the, uh, what, you're the chief product officer at Domo's? Chief product officer, it's a mouthful, but yeah. <laughs> yes, chief it is. Chief product officer. <laughs> Pun twister for exactly. you. Exactly. So, and, uh, uh, JB, uh, will, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Domos and uh, give us a quick bit on who JB Fowler is. Happy to do that. Happy to do that. So uh, Domos first, right? Domos is a uh, network monitoring platform. We're there to help um, IT departments. We're there to help manage service providers, run their, their business more efficiently. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is help our users better understand what's going on in the networks that they're deploying and installing. Uh, that being said, right, my role in it as a, a product officer is really meant to be a manager, a product manager for our service and our tools that we create. You know, I am out talking to our clients, I'm talking to our customers, um, and I'm understanding what their needs are, what their questions are. And I'm trying to, I guess I would say, effectively communicate that back into our engineering team so that we can create a product that really works for them and meets the needs of what it is they want to have done as a service. Got it. And uh, so tell us about yourself personally. Oh, me personally. Jeez. Uh, been in the industry for 22, 23 years now. Gosh, it seems like it, it seems like it just keeps getting older and older, right? They don't, they don't <laughs> right that. Um, started out as an engineer, right? Doing electrical engineering, worked for uh -huh. text instruments for many years, loved it. Um, while I was at TI, I was in the uh, really the video communications side. I ended up going from engineering to um, some more marketing roles to business management roles um, throughout my tenure there and loved it, loved it. Uh, video communications, right? So anything like unified communication systems, video conferencing systems, voice over IP, um, Texas Instruments was one of the very first, um, uh, silicon manufacturers that created products that allowed engineers from voice over IP and unified communication based companies to use software, right? To, compress audio and video uh -huh. and it was awesome running that business or helping run that business um in the end in the end what happened is i wanted to uh, spend more time with my family uh, my wife and i had two kids my oldest son was five years old at the time and i was traveling so much and i was going all over the world and i was gone for at least two to three weeks out of each year and i realized when my oldest son uh, went to kindergarten that I had missed about four years of his life. Right? And I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. So uh -huh. we decided to uh, move away from Texas, go back to the mountains, and um, which is where we we're from. We we're originally from Colorado and the Colorado and Wyoming area. But we wanted to get back to the mountains and um, have a life where we would actually get to spend time with each other and our families. So that's what took me to Utah. Um, I've been here for about 11 years now. I worked at an automation company uh, called Control4. I spent some time at a networking company called Luxel. And now I've been here at Domotes for several years. And it's been great. Absolutely love it. Cool. It sounds like you've met, had quite the journey in your career. You've gone, it sounds like, from being a technician to now you're in the C-suite at, uh, <laughs> at the current uh, position. Uh, sounds yeah. like you've had, uh, obviously, that means you've experienced success over your career. Um, you don't go from being a technician to the C-suite without success, I don't think. Yeah. So uh, what do contribute 
uh, that success too? And how can others learn from that and be more successful themselves? It's a good, uh, it's a very good question. Now I would, um, I would think that one of the things that has helped me is watching others, right? Learning from others, watching the things that they did that I really liked, uh, watching the things that they did that I didn't like, right? And, you know, in some sense, in some sense, I'd say it this way, trying to emulate what it is in the people that I liked, but while still being true to myself and, and figuring out what my needs are and what my family needs are. Um, I think one of the, one of the biggest things that um, anybody can do is listen, right? And listen effectively. So that's something that I, I view as important. One of the things, Jim, that I, that I always talk about is um, this notion of love languages, right? And I think, I think love languages were kind of built really more for, you know, husband and wife families, right? Making sure that that uh, ecosystem is tight and secure. But I also realized that um, the five love languages actually attribute very well to the work environment. And a lot of it has to do with listening, right? Understanding uh -huh. what it is your colleagues, your employees, your bosses, right? What it is that they need in order to feel validated, right? Or to feel loved, right? And, um, you know, there are certain parts of like the five love languages that I think is really, really valuable for um, not, only, not only your family, right? Your wife uh -huh. and your kids um, or even your parents, right? But also, you know, how you handle an employee, right? And how uh -huh. you handle colleague to make sure that you know they feel validated but then also you get what um you get what you need out of the situation too yeah so that like uh realizing the i guess uh from what i understand about the five long love languages it's a lot about almost their personality like uh in the Certainly. love languages it's essentially uh doing the things that uh, that that person's personality uh, likes, so to yeah. speak, I think is what the what the love language is. So you're saying that uh, the same thing uh, equates in the uh, in the business world with uh, employees. It does. It does. Right. You may have you may have some employees. In fact, a lot of engineers. Right. A lot of engineers that are out there. You know, they're happy to be working in their environment. They're happy to be individual contributors. Right. And their validation comes in the form of maybe uh, being respectful of what it is they're building. Right. Um, some people enjoy um, having a financial reward, right, for something that they do. Uh, some people just want to have appreciation. For some people, it's about a title, right, and having a title on their name. Um, I think understanding what it is that your employees or your colleagues need in order to feel loved is what helps them to become stronger. It also what helps create a, a stronger team. And I, I go back to what I said earlier, you know, I use the term listening, right? Being able to listen and understand what um, others are saying that comes in a form of not, I mean, you have to ask questions in order to be able to listen, but you also have to be right. able to um kind of watch and see how they react to various things. The idea, the idea behind, you know, having these love languages, right. And in, in uh -huh. a business environment is really to make sure that your employees or your colleagues are happy, right. And that they want to stay and that they want to work with you. They want to work for you, right. They want to work um, in an environment that they feel successful or, and that they can make successful. So any tips on how to identify what uh, an employee's so-called love language? I guess love language probably isn't necessarily the best term when it comes to <laughs> yeah. an, uh, yeah. an employee, but uh, you know what their uh, what, what their they personality care about, right? responds to. Absolutely. I mean, there are personality trait tests that you can do. Um, you know, which says how do I need to work with this person? Um, the the thing I would I would say is you have to ask, right? You have to be willing to talk to your employees, communicate with them and understand, you know, what it is that their needs are. Some of the best bosses that I've had were the ones that would just come in and ask me how my day is going, right? Uh -huh. They'd ask me how my family's been. 
Right? And I, I love those. I love those bosses that were there. There were others that would come in and, you know, ask me if I'd gotten the uh, five things that were on my to-do list done. Right. And in some sense, I felt like I was being micromanaged sometimes. Didn't really like those bosses. Right. But I think if you ask what it is that employees want and can communicate with them on a personal basis, you'll start to get to know them better. Uh -huh. I think that's that's really step one. Got it. Asking them. I know I personally I've I've had numbers a number of employees over the years and I've realized that I think I've made the mistake of trying to apply the wrong love language, so to speak. Absolutely. To the to the employee. Uh specifically, uh I can think back of I was trying to uh incentivize a technical person with a financial reward when I don't think that was their they they really that really wasn't their uh uh love language so to speak uh yeah. now that I look back at it it was uh they could have cared less if they would have made an extra whatever amount of dollars by achieving something they they're uh I think in this case, they really cared about having like more free time uh, or uh, being recognized with uh, maybe um, gifts or uh, awards, things like that yeah. versus the financial incentive. We had um, I had an employee that, um, you know, I so I'm a guy who feels validated, you know, by by getting uh, the financial aspect, right? I'm always yeah. driving towards more money. But um, I had another employee that, you know, I thought he wanted the same thing, right? I learned the hard way, but that wasn't what he wanted, right? What he wanted was more the the team aspect, right? He really cared about, and I mean, you can liken this to, you know, the touching or the feeling side of the love languages with your spouse. But what he really cared about is the camaraderie. Right. He cared about the team building aspect that our company was was trying to build. And I don't really feel like I spoke his love language enough. I was like, here, here, here's some more money. Right. Here's a bonus. Right. Here's yeah. here's a gift card for the good things that you did. And I think what he would have cared more about was um, going out with the whole team to an event. Right. It could have been going bowling. It could have been going to a team lunch. But being there for him to socialize with his fellow team members and getting to know them more personally, that to him was a, was much more important than, you know, him making a six figure salary or whatever it was. Got it. Any other tips uh, about, I guess, uh, applying love languages to employees? <laughs> No, no, I don't have uh, many more tips. I mean, I think we uh, we kind of hit uh, quite a bit of that and probably exhausted it a little bit for what your listeners want to hear. But I uh, I just I view those as being an important part of being a good manager uh -huh. and being a good uh, being a good uh, I guess I'd say executive. Any other keys to your success that come to mind? Um, patience, patience was a tough one for me. Um, I think nowadays you always, you know, you could, you could put the uh, quintessential millennial term out there, right? Everybody wants immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. um, there, I, I'm going to say two things with this. Um, I think patience is important, right? Taking time to actually learn, taking time to understand a process is really, really important. And I think that you may want to be a CEO one day, right? You may want to get to CTO, right? Depending on what your desires are. But I will say that you should not expect that to come immediately, okay? But I wanna counter that as well, okay? Um, I think that one thing that I did, and it was actually while I was at Texas Instruments, and while I was at TI, I had really three different roles in there. I do think you have to be able to look at where you are today. You have to be able to look at the environment that you're in. When I say the environment, I mean the company, the people that you work with. You have to look at where they're going strategically. Um, you have to be able to determine whether you as an individual are happy where you are. 
and waiting for somebody to give you something, right? Whether that's a promotion or give you a reward, right? Is also not, that's not what I mean by patience, okay? But I think you also can't be quick to rush to judgment. Um, I think one of the things that so many young people today do is they're looking for an immediate gratification and they're not necessarily asking the right questions to their bosses, to their colleagues, or to their um, mentors, right? About, you know, am I in the right environment? Am I doing the right things? Or what sh things should I be thinking about? Um, I think having a uh, mentor is a good thing as well, right? Because it is that mentor that can act as somewhat of a counselor mm -hmm. to help you um, determine whether uh, you're on the right path or not. And I want to point out, right, and this is where this is that counter to patience. Um, if you determine that you're on the wrong path for happiness, success, right, however you define that, then I think it's time to move on. This is like when you moved on from Texas Instruments. You yeah. like that. Exactly. Was... Exactly. I mean, I, at that point, right, I realized I wanted, um, you know, I wanted a lot, right? <laughs> I wanted more money. I, I wanted success. I wanted rewards. Um, I wanted titles. But I also had to look internally at what I was giving up while working at a company like Texas Instruments in order to get there. And I determined personally that my family was uh, too high of a cost, right? I needed to make sure that I stuck with my family and um, grew that. And it was the right choice for me. Got it. Cool. So any final thoughts regarding your success? No, no, no more final thoughts. <laughs> no, no final thoughts. Uh, any uh, ask uh, for the audience, um, anybody that uh, who would be like, uh, uh, who would be a good fit? What type of, uh, I guess, MSPs or uh, what type of companies would be a good fit to, or should be looking at uh, Domo's um, to use, utilize that you guys have to offer? Uh, that That's a good question. You know, so I would tell you this, um, our market, right? The, the market segments that we go after um, or kind of the industries that we go after with Domo's, first and foremost are managed service providers and IT departments. And so I kind of lump these together because they are, um, they're installing networks, they're dealing with wireless access points or wireless networks, they're dealing with firewalls, routers, they're dealing with managed switches. Mm -hmm. um, so anything that touches a network, right, is a very, anybody that touches a network or installs networks is a very, very good candidate for Domo's. The second industry, that Domo's plays really well in is what we consider to be the integration market. So commercial integrators that are installing audio video systems or pro AV systems, mm -hmm. people that are installing unified communications, right? Video conferencing systems, voice over IP systems. Um, those are systems that usually are sitting on a network. Yes. But one of, the, one of the amazing things that Domo's does is it will scan those networks. It'll understand the devices that are on the networks. It will classify them, but it also provides remote connectivity in a very safe and secure way into those networks. So that is a real benefit for um, commercial integrators uh -huh. to gain so access to their systems. So if you have uh numbers of a number of networks uh, that are geographically dispersed um it'd be a great fit for you so you can it is yeah so I basically mean... you provide monitoring and access and is there other things some is there things that i'm missing there no 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 so so a couple things that domotes does right that does really well first of all asset management right discovering all of the devices that are on the network and then classifying those devices is um, a big thing. Uh, remote connectivity, right? And monitoring of those devices. So if something goes wrong with one of those devices, it's very easy to securely connect and, re and remote into that system without opening up 
you know, unnecessary ports, right? Mm -hmm. You're using all secure connectivity for it. And then um, the last thing is understanding the systems that are on the network and how secure they are, right? So when it comes to security, right? Domotes will monitor the platform. We'll look for ports that are open. We'll do a topology map, right? We'll map out the network and understand what it looks like. So when it comes to security frameworks and CIS controls, anybody that is concerned around that, Domotes is an excellent tool for being able to, um, to build out that network map and understand what's going on in all these systems. It really is about proactively managing systems, right? So that you know something's wrong before your customers know something's wrong. But it's also about helping you be more operational efficient. So if I can lower the cost, if I can eliminate on-site support visits, for instance, mm -hmm. it's a very, very good tool for that. And it's very cheap compared to an on-site visit. Got it. So if uh, somebody was interested, want to learn more, how would be a good way to contact, uh, I guess, your, the company or yourself? What, what you know, our, you our website, our website is absolutely the best way to do that. So domotes.com is going to be the way that you can get started. You have a free trial, 14 day free trial there. Um, I would invite you to email our team sales at domotes.com or support at domotes.com. You have, you have questions, uh, Jim, we have lots of videos for onboarding and training and learning. Um, in fact, you'll hear my voice on several of those videos. So, um, that's the best way to get started is to try us. Got it. Well, thank you for your, uh, your time here today and sharing your knowledge. And it was very interesting learning about thank you. love languages of being applied to employees. Yeah, I look forward to seeing how you, uh, how you segue from domotes and remote monitoring into love languages. That'll be good. <laughs> it's definitely a unique, uh, it's a unique podcast here. <laughs> good good well hopefully, hopefully I think, people I think enjoy it's it. uh very interesting and I mean I've interviewed uh probably 50 executives in the space and this is the first time I've heard love languages being applied to employees good deal glad to glad to do it glad to be different there you know <laughs> well again thank you and uh until next time on the profits of IT I am Jim Punzenberger your host the creator of the managed prospecting system you're looking to generate new clients either be or partners be sure to check out managedprospectingsystem.com thank you for tuning in to the profits of it please smash that like button subscribe and share